Namaste to one and all. This is Abhishek from IIT Khadakpur, India. I will be presenting our work on fairness and interpretability issues in e-commerce search through smart speakers. It is a joint work in collaboration with researchers from Khadakpur, IIT Delhi, and MPISWS Sarbrook. I assume most of the listeners have tried searching for products on an e-commerce site such as Amazon. Let's say you want to go on a hike during the weekend and you need a backpack for the same. You would enter the query hiking backpack on Amazon search bar. Upon clicking the search button, a ranked list of products, uh, products appear in the decreasing order of their relevance. Additionally, some product metadata, for example, its price, brand, ratings, etc., are also shown for better decision making. Customers have multiple options and enough information to make their choices in this traditional setup. Now let's contrast it with the modern way of e-commerce search through smart speakers. These smart speakers are powered by different voice assistants. For example, the smart speaker shown in this slide is an Amazon Echo Dot and it is powered by Alexa voice assistant. When a customer poses a query, Alexa essentially spells out the details of a single product with a brief explanation behind its decision. The exact transcript of the response from Alexa is shown here. It can be broadly divided into two parts, an audio response and a default action. Let us look at this response more closely. The highlighted box is the query string in your command. Then the next portion is the product detail that Alexa is essentially recommending to the customer. The product detail includes the title, price, delivery date, etc. The highlighted red box is a brief explanation that Alexa provides, that is Amazon's choice. When Alexa says this newly highlighted portion, the default action of adding the product to the customer's cart takes place. When you want to complete the transaction, you will have to say, order it now. There are several other explanations that Alexa provides, for example, a top result, a best-selling option, etc. For more details, please refer to the paper. If you consider carefully, in contrast to the traditional setup, here, the customer hardly has any choice to make. Rather, the choice was done by the voice assistant on his or her behalf. In other words, customers cede complete autonomy to the digital system in this interaction, unlike traditional setup. We argue that during such interactions, the digital system should be more re responsible in its decision making. Therefore, in this paper, we explore the following two research questions. How do customers interpret the explanations given in the audio response by voice assistants, in our case, Alexa? How fair is the default action of product selection by Alexa voice assistant? Let us first discuss the importance of these questions before getting into the technical nitty gritty. To understand the importance of the first research question, let us consider the following situation. Say Bob wants to buy a backpack and he poses a query to Alexa. Alexa responded saying a top result is P. After the interaction is over, Bob thinks, wow, Alexa is so cool. I got the top result on Amazon with just a single voice command. It must be a great product because Alexa said it's the top result. Let me check some more features of this product on the desktop. Then he issues the same query backpack, but this time on the desktop browser. Primed by the explanation, Bob expected the product P to appear at the top position, which is the position one in the search result. However, he did not find the product P on the search engine result page at all. Wait, but Alexa said it's a top result for the query. Now, such lack of consistency across the mediums might confuse customers and reduce the trustworthiness of the voice assistants among them. Therefore, interpretability of the explanations are essential for making the voice assistants more trustworthy and widely accepted among the customer base. Coming to the fairness aspect of the default action, research shows that customers have the tendency often to take the path of less effort. 
which is the default choice. Moreover, customers often think that the default option usually comes with an implicit or explicit endorsement from the choice architects, which in this case is Amazon itself. So the likelihood of purchasing the default option is generally high. Now consider if Alexa does not select the most relevant product at a particular time, then what are the repercussions of such non-selection? For a starter, it will deny the sellers and producers of the product an opportunity for sales and revenue. Secondly, it may also mislead and steer the customer to a possibly less relevant product, which can have adverse effects on the customer satisfaction. Therefore, fairness of the default action is of paramount interest for both sets of stakeholders on the marketplace. With the stage set, now let's get into the first research question regarding customer's interpretation of the explanation. There are several challenges in understanding customer's interpretation. These explanations have several semantics and nuances attached to them. Moreover, unlike traditional mediums such as desktop browsing, customers are not conversant with these smart speakers and shopping through them. So to understand customer's interpretation, we need a baseline which should be popular among the customer base. To this end, nearly two thirds of customers use desktop websites to shop on Amazon. So in this work, we choose to contrast the customer's interpretation with the corresponding observation on the traditional desktop product search on Amazon. This brings us to another important challenge, how to design an effective data collection framework for such an analysis. This slide shows the data collection pipeline that we had set up for the work. Provided a query string, we generate an audio signal of the sentence, Alexa, buy me a query string. Then the audio signal is played to the Alexa Echo Dot device and simultaneously the query is fired on the Amazon desktop browser. When we, then we collect the response from the system in both the cases and also collect uh, the product metadata for the product added to cart by Alexa and shown on the search engine result page in the desktop browser. For meaningful comparison, we try to make the context as much similar as possible by using the same user account, same location for search and delivery address, etc. We repeated this process for 1000 queries and recorded the response from Alexa as well as desktop browser on Amazon. The experiment was conducted in Amazon's Indian marketplace using Echo Dot device available in India. We also collected 14 temporal snapshots to understand the stability and consistency of our result for 100 most searched keywords on Amazon. To our knowledge, this is the first of its kind data collection framework, which contrasts the two different modes of interaction with the same goal in mind. In order to get access to the data, interested people can fill the form at the given link. Of the 1000 queries, we found that in 66% cases, the explanation provided by Alexa was Amazon's choice, like shown in this slide. So in this talk, I shall discuss this most prevalent explanation. Interested audience can look into the paper for observations on the other explanations. Then what exactly is Amazon's choice? The phrase Amazon's choice itself is not very informative. However, Amazon defines it as Amazon's choice highlights highly rated and well-priced product available to ship immediately. The description itself provides us with two nuances without succinctly defining either. To see what customers understand from these explanations, we conducted a survey among 100 respondents. Majority of our respondents were well-versed with Amazon e-commerce marketplace. We asked them different questions pertaining to interpretation of these nuances, expected position of products with such explanations and their purchase likelihood for such products. For Amazon's choice, our first question to customers was what do they interpret by product to be highly rated? According to 59% respondents, a product with more than four average user rating out of five can be considered highly rated. Indeed, that was the case. All 662 products added to cart with Amazon's choice explanation 
were having average rating four out of five or more. Upon being asked about their interpretation of well-priced product, 61% respondents said that the price of the product should be among the least five prices on the result page. However, we observed that in nearly 23% cases, Amazon's choice product adhered to this interpretation of a well-priced product. So while Amazon's choice product were highly rated, they did not really fall under the interpretation of what people might consider well-priced. The next question we ask respondents is about where do they expect Amazon's choice product to appear on their desktop search results? More than half of the respondents expected the Amazon's choice products to appear in the top five position. In fact, 30% even expected these products to appear at the top position, which is position one. We observed that in 74% cases, indeed Amazon's choice product appeared in top five positions on Amazon search results. However, in only 39% cases, they appear at the top position. And even more worryingly, only 8% cases, they in nearly 8% cases, they did not even appear in the first search engine result page at all, much like the situation which I was explaining a few slides earlier. The summary from the survey is highlighted in the table on this slide. As you can see in the last row, even for the explanation of a top result, the most prevalent interpretation and the observation in desktop search do not align with each other in 81% cases. Thus, the interpretation of respondents and observations on traditional medium do not align with each other in a significant majority of the cases. Even more worryingly, these observations are not based on a solitary snapshot. Rather, they consistently appear across all the temporal snapshots we analyzed. Further, more than half of the respondents opine that they are likely or very likely to purchase products which are accompanied with such explanations, highlighting the positive nudging ability of these phrases, which naturally flows into our second research question on the fairness aspect of the default action. As shown in this figure, the default action of Alexa is to add the product to customer's cart. Notice the non-selection of the most relevant product might have unfairness concerns for both sellers and the customers on the marketplace. To this end, first we tried to quantify the unfairness toward producers or sellers. We compared the exposure that a product will get due to different mediums of interaction and the difference between the two is defined as exposure bias. We saw that for a significant 68% of the products, the bias score was observed to be non-zero as the product added to cart did not come from the top position of Amazon search results. That is, the most relevant product as per Amazon's own search ranking algorithm were never added to cart by Alexa and hence potentially depriving their producers an opportunity for sales and revenue. For more detailed results, please refer to the paper. To understand the fairness concerns from the customer's perspective, we conducted a survey among the same 100 participants and asked them their preferences. Each customer was shown a product which was added to cart by Alexa and the top organic search result on Amazon browser. Then they were asked which of the two products they prefer to buy. In an overwhelming 73.3% cases, we find that the respondent preference and, the, and that of Alexa did not match at all. Out of the total thousand evaluations that we performed, in 73.2% cases, customers preferred the top Amazon search result over the product added to cart by Alexa. This observation further underpins the unfairness and potential customer dissatisfaction that can be caused due to the default action of Alexa. To summarize the findings of our work, we find a significant gap between customers' interpretation of explanations and observations in traditional media. We also found that in a significant fraction of the cases, the default action taken by the voice assistant is neither fair to customers nor is it fair to producers. To reiterate our primary argument, given customers see complete autonomy to the smart speakers, their response and actions need to be more responsible during such interactions. 
We hope that findings of this work will motivate researchers to understand and mitigate these issues and to build more trustworthy voice assistance and seamless experience for the customers. Finally, I would like to extend our acknowledgement to ERC Advanced Grant, TCS Research Fellowship, and Synerge IIT Khadakpur for supporting our research. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Abhishek. Perfect timing. Is there any question from the audience? I have a couple of questions. I will address one now. So um, I wonder, I mean, it's very interesting what you have found uh, between the differences on the search results between Alexa's uh, top search result and, and, and the normal desktop results from Amazon. I wonder what are the incentives or whether you have thought of what, they, what are the incentives incentive for Amazon um, to be fair in this regard, because that might, might be that um, they will uh, send the, the products of their competitors to the, to the user. So what would be the incentive for Amazon to be fair and or whether it's the job of the, the job of the users on how uh, they do the search queries in, in, in Amazon or in Alexa? What are your thoughts about it? Uh, so in, te in terms of the in incentives, so, uh, so basically on Amazon, if you consider, there are products which, which are sold by third party sellers and there are also products which are sold by Amazon themselves. At the same time, there are products which are produced or manufactured by other third party brands. Let's say, uh, if I give you an example of battery as a category, so Duracell is a third party brand which produces batteries. Amazon Basics is also a brand which produces batteries. Now, so there is more and more incentives that Amazon can actually steer the customers towards these sort of products. And if you think about it, when someone says me that it's Amazon's choice, for a customer or for a naive user who doesn't know what was Amazon's choice, quote unquote, Amazon's choice means, it is very hard to actually understand what what should be what should we actually do? What should what is the underlying uh, the what is the umbrella umbrella term Amazon's choice actually means? Now, so so that's why when 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 in the plat when in the marketplace itself there are uh, these different uh, sellers, there are these different uh, sort of conflict of interest rising. So there is, a, there is a more chance of potential unfairness, which may somehow creep into the system. And that, is, that was kind of the incentive that Amazon might have in, uh, in having those umbrella terms uh, in some sense. And these, uh, these intuitions are also backed up by some of the recent media findings in Reuters and the markup uh, articles, which were saying some stuff about how Amazon can actually potentially be involved in some antitrust uh, issues in the search uh, and the promotion of their private labels. Um, what was the second question? Oh, that was it. Okay. Yes. What were the incentive? Uh, well, the second one is a full, uh, it's a, I can ask it uh, at the end of, of the independent session. Okay, sure. Yes, but that, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's thank Abhishek. There is another question, but we will address that one in the panel discussion.